Okay, we back in New York with a short story. We are not going to waste any time, let's get into it. The dangers of celebrities wearing jewelry and attracting the attention of potential thieves are unfortunately very real. When high-profile individuals flaunt expensive jewelry in public, they inadvertently make themselves targets for theft. This phenomenon isn't new and has been a concern for celebrities for quite some time. Moreover, celebrities, especially when surrounded by entourages or security personnel, may sometimes become complacent or feel invincible, leading them to let their guard down. This sense of security can be misleading and make them vulnerable to opportunistic thieves who strike when least expected. Another danger is the psychological toll that such incidents can have on the victims. Being robbed, especially in a violent or traumatic manner, can leave lasting emotional scars and a heightened sense of fear and vulnerability. It can also shatter the illusion of safety and privacy that many celebrities strive to maintain. Additionally, the loss of valuable jewelry can have significant financial repercussions, not only in terms of the monetary value of the items stolen, but also in terms of the potential impact on their career and public image. Celebrities may face criticism or scrutiny for their perceived extravagance or lack of security measures, which can damage their reputation and brand. To mitigate these dangers, celebrities often employ various security measures, such as hiring personal bodyguards, using discreet transportation, or avoiding wearing expensive jewelry in public altogether. However, despite their best efforts, the risk of theft remains a persistent concern for those in the public eye. Ultimately, while wearing jewelry is a personal choice, celebrities must remain vigilant and take precautions to protect themselves from potential harm. Being mindful of their surroundings, limiting the display of valuables in public, and investing in comprehensive security measures can help minimize the risks associated with being a high-profile individual in today's society. Hurley was born April 17, 1991, in the Bronx. He came up on Marion Avenue. After Hurley's cousin was murdered, his mother decided to leave the city and relocate to suburban Middletown, New York when he was 14. Hurley attended Pine Bush High School in Pine Bush, New York, before transferring to Mount Zion Christian Academy in Durham, North Carolina. Tragedy affected Hurley once again, after his brother drowned in Shahari Creek at age 32. This led to Hurley wanting to be closer to his family and attending Sullivan County Community College. As a high school junior, Hurley told the Times Herald record that he was only 6 foot 5 inches tall, despite being listed at 6 foot 6 inches. Considered a two-star recruit by ESPN.com, Hurley was listed as the number 102 small forward in the nation in 2010. Hurley was a junior college star at Sullivan County Community College, where he was the two-time Division III NJCAA Player of the Year. After considering offers from major conference schools, he signed with Wichita State. Hurley made an immediate impact for the Shockers, averaging 13.9 points and 5.4 rebounds per game. He was named First Team All-Missouri Valley Conference and the MVC Newcomer of the Year. In the postseason, Early led the team to the 2013 Final Four in Atlanta. In the Shockers' semifinal game against eventual champion Louisville, Early scored 24 points and collected 10 rebounds in a narrow 72-68 loss. He was named to the All-Final Four team for his efforts. Going into his senior season, Early gained widespread national attention. He was named preseason player of the year for the Missouri Valley Conference and was named to the preseason top 50 watch lists for the John Wooden and Nysmith Awards for National Player of the Year. Early helped lead the 2013-14 team to an undefeated 34-0 record, entering the NCAA tournament, becoming the first team in Division I men's basketball to do so in over two decades. Early put up an impressive effort in an attempt to help the Shockers advance to the Sweet 16, with 31 points and 7 rebounds on 12 of 17 shooting. The Shockers ended up losing to Kentucky 78-76, ending their hopes of the Final Four repeat. On June 26, 2014, Early was selected with the 34th overall pick in the 2014 NBA Draft by the New York Knicks. On August 1, 2014, he signed with the Knicks. During his rookie season, he had multiple assignments with the Westchester Knicks of the NBA Development League. In three games for Westchester during the 2014-15 season, he averaged 20.3 points and 9.7 rebounds per game. On March 25, 2015, Early had a season-best game for New York, with 18 points and 4 rebounds in a loss to the Los Angeles Clippers. During the 2015-16 season, Early received multiple assignments to Westchester. 
On December 2, 2015, he became the fifth player ever to appear in both a development league game and NBA game in the same day. But after this, things would spiral for the worst. In late December of 2015, the New York Knicks forward was shot in the knee by masked men. The assailant swarmed an Uber car carrying him home from a strip club in Queens. They stole several necklaces and gold caps for his teeth. After the shooting, which occurred around 4.30 a.m. in Maspeth, Mr. Early, 24, was forced to seek help at the front door of a stranger's house. The authorities said it appeared he had been targeted in a coordinated robbery by about a half dozen people who converged on his car in three vehicles, ordered him outside, and then fled into the pre-dawn darkness. The shooting came a week after the National Basketball Association threw the weight of its valuable brand behind an advertising campaign, calling for an end to gun violence, aligning itself with a group founded by former Mayor Michael R. Bloomberg, who has pushed for stricter limits on firearm sales. Star power has not shielded NBA players from violence and theft. Mr. Early was the second member of the Knicks that month to be robbed of jewelry after a late night at a club. We all are targets at the end of the day, Carmelo Anthony, the Knicks star at the time, who was among those to appear in the anti-gun violence ads that were broadcast on Christmas, said. I'm not a saint, he added. I go out and have a good time with friends and family. But I think we have to do a better job of being more safe and putting ourselves in safe environments. Mr. Early was heading home from Cityscape's Gentlemen's Club with a girlfriend when three cars boxed in the car he was in and forced it to the side of the road. It happened about a mile from the club, near the intersection of Maurice and Tyler Avenues, the authorities said. He had played just 29 seconds in the Knicks' victory over the Detroit Pistons at Madison Square Garden and was due at practice in about seven hours. The assailants then got out of their cars, some wearing ski masks and two carrying small semi-automatic guns, and ordered Mr. Early to get out of his, the police said. The men stole Mr. Early's cash, gold caps for his teeth, an iPhone, and two yellow metal chains with medallions, before shooting him in the right knee, the police said. The men also took the Uber driver's identification card. The woman was unharmed and none of her belongings were stolen. The Uber driver then pulled his gray Toyota Camry around the corner, where a nearby resident heard Mr. Early's screams. He said he saw the Uber driver standing outside and saw Mr. Early sitting in a metal chair on a neighbor's porch across the street. He is grabbing on the door handle and leaning on the door, the person said. He said he called 911 because he was worried that Mr. Early was a burglar. The neighbor whose doorknob Mr. Early was jiggling called 911 as well, before he realized Mr. Early was hurt and let him inside. I am pretty upset that this happened here. If two cars can ambush a vehicle, then that's scary. The police were still seeking the suspects later on that day. The operations director at an office furniture company around the corner from the strip club said he had shared with detective surveillance footage filmed just after 4 a.m. that showed two cars waiting at an intersection. When the cars turned onto Maurice Avenue, the footage showed a third car, which joined them a short distance behind. Less than two weeks prior, another young Knicks forward, Derek Williams, was robbed of about $617,000 worth of valuables, including a Rolex, a diamond bracelet, a necklace and a Louis Vuitton bag, the two women he had brought to his Manhattan apartment around 5 a.m. Derek Fisher, the Knicks coach at the time, emphasized that Mr. Williams and Mr. Early were victims of crimes and had not violated team rules. Enjoying New York's nightlife is something of a ritual for professional athletes, though the lure of the wee hours can be greatest for those, like Mr. Early, who did not play regularly. An athletic 6'8 forward, he had played in just 10 games that season, averaging 0.7 points and 0.2 rebounds in 3.4 minutes per game, a steep drop-off from the season prior. In 2017, three men, described by federal prosecutors as members of an armed robbery crew, were charged with taking part in the early morning shooting and robbery of Early. They were Johan Anthony, 26, of Queens, and Dashan Tejada, 26, and Shaquille Walker, 25, both of Brooklyn. According to the court papers, they had also robbed someone outside a barbershop in Queens, using the same tactic of surrounding their victim and brandishing a gun. Two weeks earlier, the crew had robbed another victim who was sitting in a parked car outside a nightclub in Manhattan, the papers said. And the month before, Mr. Tejada and an unnamed partner took part in an armed robbery of a victim who was parked outside of cityscapes. During all of those attacks, Mr. Anthony was on parole after serving a three-year sentence in connection with a 2012 conviction for attempted burglary. 
Mr. Tejada, the court papers said, had two gun cases pending in state Supreme Court in Brooklyn, one of which involved the November 2011 shooting of a German tourist. Mr. Walker had no prior criminal convictions, but the court papers said that a bench warrant had been issued against him in Carbon County, Pennsylvania, for failing to appear in court on charges connected to the possession of burglary tools. All three men pleaded not guilty at their arraignment and held without bail. As for Johan Antony, back in 2010, he got caught up in a raid at Waka Flocka's crib. Waka Flocka wasn't there, but Gucci Man was. However, those charges were later dropped. But, what happened in the Cleanthony early robbery according to court documents? The co-conspirators' roles in the robbery in the early morning hours of December 30, 2015, the defendants Dash and Tejada, Shaquille Walker, Johan Antony, Jose Rivera, Rahim Kaiser and a cooperating witness, traveled from the Tompkins houses in Brooklyn to the Cityscapes nightclub in Queens with the express intent to commit a robbery. Tejada was armed with a 9mm handgun. The defendants traveled to the club in three vehicles, a white BMW sedan driven by Anthony, with cooperating witness 1 as a passenger, 2, a black Toyota rental car driven by Tejada with Kaiser as a passenger, and, 3, a burgundy Mercedes SUV driven by Walker with Rivera as a passenger. All three vehicles parked outside of the club. Tejada and Kaiser exited their vehicle and entered the club to look for patrons with expensive jewelry. After the pair returned to their vehicle, all six conspirators observed the eventual victim standing outside the club, wearing what appeared to be expensive gold chains. The co-conspirators subsequently recognized this individual to be a professional basketball player. After observing the victim and a female companion drive away in an Uber, the co-conspirators followed the Uber in their respective vehicles. While driving, the conspirators made plans via telephone to box in the Uber in order to effectuate the robbery. Shortly after departing the club, the Uber stopped at a red light. The white BMW driven by Anthony pulled alongside of the Uber, while the black Toyota driven by Tejada and the Mercedes truck driven by Walker pulled behind the Uber. Just as Tejada exited the vehicle to begin the robbery, the light turned green and the Uber drove off. Thereafter all three cars continued to follow the Uber. This sequence of events was captured on surveillance video from a nearby premises. A short time later, off-camera, the three vehicles managed to box in the Uber. This time, the black Toyota driven by Tejada was positioned in front of the Uber, the white BMW driven by Anthony pulled alongside the Uber, and the Mercedes truck driven by Walker blocked the rear of the Uber. Tejada, Rivera, and cooperating witness 1 exited their respective vehicles and pulled early and Uber driver out of the vehicle. Walker and Anthony waited in the driver's seat of their respective vehicles, continuing to block any avenue of egress. Thereafter, Tejada, Rivera and CW1 removed property from early, including two gold chains and two cellular telephones. During the robbery, all of the co-conspirators wore masks with the exception of Tejada. Notwithstanding early's compliance, Tejada fired a gunshot striking the victim in the leg. You have to wonder if this was intentional, since they knew he was a ball player. Following the shooting, Tejada, Rivera and CW1 got back into the waiting vehicles and fled the scene. Tejada, obviously, was the most culpable, given his wanton discharge of his firearm, which struck the victim and caused serious physical injury. That was pretty much that though. As for early, he re-signed with the New York Knicks on October 18, 2016, but was waived three days later. On October 31, 2016, Early was acquired by the Westchester Knicks of the NBA Development League as an affiliate player of the New York Knicks. However, he is currently playing for the Suggest SC of the Lebanese Basketball League. He is lucky he can still play basketball, as he was shot in the leg, and that could have ultimately ended his basketball career altogether. But this about wraps this one up, and as always, stay low and thanks for watching.